guys we are back with another video today uh today we have a very familiar a6 we just did a carbon cleaning on this not too long ago not sure if you guys remember it's this white a6 i believe it's a 2014 and uh he, he wanted to do a carbon cleaning but uh he had a check engine light when he came in for the secondary air injection system flow too low which um or insufficient flow no flow which essentially means the air pump is not getting air into the secondary air passages in the cylinder head. If you guys are unfamiliar with how the system works, there is similar to like an air mattress pump in the passenger side fender well if you're in a left-hand drive vehicle. And uh, it takes air from the air filter. There's like a little hose that goes from the air filter, goes into the mattress pump. And then um, that pumps air all the way underneath the supercharger to the back of the valley. And at the back of the motor, it tees off into two. And right there, it'll go into what they call the combi valves or the combination valves. And essentially, those are vacuum controlled with either one or two uh, little solenoids that sit on top of the supercharger. And uh, those solenoids will open up the combination valves with vacuum. They're like little vacuum actuator diaphragms. And uh, they will allow fresh air to flow into the, the ports of the cylinder heads, which then creates a lean condition post combustion chamber which is, uh, I guess, best for the motor when you're trying to heat up the cats because you don't want to create a lean condition in cylinder because you might melt the aluminum pistons that it has or the aluminum block that it has. Um, so the head has uh, sufficient cooling. The head has sufficient enough cooling to, uh, to deal with the lean condition on the exhaust port side. So it creates a little lean condition, gets the exhaust hotter a after the exhaust valves. Uh, and it heats up the catalytic converter faster. And... Uh, strictly for emissions there's no performance benefit there's no nothing to gain from it besides i mean maybe a little bit better gas mileage on cold starts and uh i'd say that's about it maybe a little bit less fuel consumption as the catalytic converters heat up faster a little bit more accurate of an air fuel ratio i wouldn't even say that because the air fuel ratio is upstream not downstream but you know it may help heat up the o2 sensors which are temperature dependent as well so but it is mostly for emissions, and uh, he did not pass emissions. He's got the sheet right here uh, with the codes on it. So uh, he just dropped it off, and uh, I'm going to go drive it over to the shop right now. We're going to do a little bit of digging. I'm going to show you guys how to kind of look into these faults. So we uh, we had already replaced the, the solenoid that controls vacuum to the combi valves. But we will vacuum test that just to make sure it's holding. And... Uh, we're gonna look into everything else. Activate the the air pump with the scan tool. See if it's flowing. Uh, probably smoke the system. See if there's any smoke coming out from any of the lines or anything. And uh, manually vacuum actuate the combination valves on the back of the cylinder head. Which, if those are bad, would be a not so fun day. But you hardly see those things go bad. So, um, worst case scenario is we have to do a secondary air injection carbon cleaning which I have never been a fan of doing. You have to pull the whole front clip off. Everything in the front of the motor has got to come off and there are two freeze plugs that sit in the front of the block, uh, in front of the cylinder head, I should say. And those, uh, those go to the passages down to the exhaust valve. So um, those get clogged up with carbon, at least in the 3.2 naturally aspirated. So you don't really see it happen in the three liter supercharged motors. So what, what, is that, what ends up happening is you have to, uh, have to remove everything else you have to remove those freeze plugs and then you have access to pressure wash uh, the block which is kind of sketchy you have to take the spark plugs out the ignition coils make sure it doesn't flood the cylinders you have to drop the exhaust from the back to make sure the uh, the system isn't filling up with water or the engine isn't filling up with water so it is a very sketchy job to do it's not something not something that you should really be DIYing if you need to. Uh, I would definitely consult a shop unless you're feeling a little brazy about it, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and test everything out and hopefully it's something simpler like uh, the secondary air injection pump, like a little air pump, and hopefully it's not something too crazy like a, like a clogged cylinder head or something. So we're going to see. We're going to take a look into it for them, but uh, I will update you guys when we get back to the shop. All right, so we got it in the shop here. We're gonna go ahead and do some vacuum testing first. So coming around to the back, this version has two solenoids. Um, 
the one that goes to the back, you can see here, that's going to the combination valves that sits on the back of the cylinder heads. This one over here, on the other hand, this one goes underneath the supercharger, and uh, that in turn opens up the flaps. So there's uh, two different flaps. We're probably, probably gonna vacuum actuate these as well. It's hard to stick your finger down there and actually actuate them, but you can see one right there. Um, you'll see it move, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and vacuum actuate everything back there. After scanning, we got air system insufficient flow, bank one and bank two. So we're gonna go ahead and vacuum test uh, that solenoid back there and just the line that goes back to the combination valves on the back of the cylinder heads and uh, we're going to see if it's holding vacuum, see if the solenoid is holding vacuum and then opening up when it is commanded to via the scan tool. We got it hooked up to the solenoid itself. This side should hold vacuum, that side should not. So we're going to go ahead and see what happens when we activate it. and it opens up like it should. So we just watched that solenoid open up when it was commanded by the ECU. So we know that's good. So we're gonna move ahead and go onto the secondary air pump and try to activate it. One thing I did notice is that he has the secondary air ejection pump inlet open. Usually this connects to the air box, but since this is an aftermarket cold air intake, um, there's nowhere for it to plug in. They just saw like a mini filter that goes over. I've never seen one that plugs in nice enough to actually work correctly but anything would be better than nothing i hope this didn't suck in some type of debris and clog up anything in that tract but i have a feeling that's unlikely so i'm going to go ahead and turn it on and we should see should see some vacuum on there so we're going to go ahead and start it okay and i don't hear anything there should be some type of vacuum. You should hear it turn on, kind of like a mattress pump. So the fact that we commanded that on and nothing is coming out of it um, kind of is indicative that this pump has either stopped working or the relay has. So we're going to go ahead and look at the relay beforehand. But uh, besides that, it's something with this pump mechanism going on. So with the secondary air injection pump activated, you hear the relay under here. Click, 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 click. Click, click. So it is activating it on and off. So it seems that the circuit does have control over it. So we're gonna go ahead and check the wire into the pump down there, see if we can hear anything, and then we'll go from there. All right, we are at the passenger side wheel well here. There is the secondary air injection pump right there. So this is the intake, and then the discharge line is right here. And that goes up underneath the supercharger valley. And uh, this is the electrical connection here. It draws quite a bit of amperage, so these are some thicker wires. but. Uh, I'm going to stick the multimeter in here and see how much voltage this thing is pushing. All right, so we had voltage going to this thing. I ended up just taking it out. It's three 10 millimeters. You just wiggle it out. Uh, it's got a little extra harness on there. But um, I took it out just to kind of put some power to it and see what we got going on here. And these are live, so yeah, it has a live wire. And we, with power on ground, it'll, it'll spark, but this thing won't turn. So uh, it's either internally blocked or there's some type of internal shortage which is causing it to causing it to not run or function as properly. But uh, we look over here, it doesn't look like it's touching ground, but damn near may as well be because uh, this thing's got a damaged wire in it. So we're going to have to end up replacing this. It is not working when you put power and ground to it. It's not activating via the scan tool, so it's pretty conclusive that this thing has failed. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can find one local here and uh, go ahead and replace it for him. But besides that, that is pretty much the, the majority of the diagnostics. I didn't really get a chance to dive into it and uh, show you guys how to smoke it. But essentially, if you come down here, you'll just stick a, a, uh, a smoke machine into this outlet tube right here and uh, take a look around the routing of it as it goes through the front of the motor, up underneath the supercharger, and then to the back, see if you see any smoke coming from it. But uh, in our case, this is what failed. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this for him, and uh, that'll be it. So that pretty much concludes the video today. I would say it's pretty definitive that it's the secondary air injection pump. Uh, I just wanna take you guys down the route of everything else it could be. Glad it wasn't the passages in the cylinder head, because that would require pressure washing of the, the ports and the passages, which is, not a fun task to do either for the mechanic or for the customer. Yeah, the combination valves held vacuum, all the lines looked good, the secondary air injection tubes looked good, um, the, the 
solenoid was holding vacuum as well, and when it was commanded open, it opened. So, other than that, pretty much goes down to the pump, which we applied power and ground to, and lo and behold, it had some type of internal short or blockage causing it to not spin. And uh, it was definitely still drawing amperage. So definitely still drawing amperage, so that thing has definitely failed. So we're gonna throw a new one in there tomorrow. I got it coming from Chicago. Uh, it should be here 11 o'clock-ish. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that in tomorrow morning, see if, uh, see if it does some good cold starts, and see if we can get it to pass emissions for them. But other than that, I think that'll pretty much conclude this repair. So catch you guys in the next video.